And we are set to go once again, three rounds. This in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist standing five feet, 10 inches tall. Weighing in officially 145 and one third bounds. In six bouts, he has four victories and two defeats. From Derby, England, here is Dane Truman. And next, his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in 145 and three quarter pounds and brings eight victories and six defeats into the cage. Fighting out of Newcastle, England, here is Liam Bad Intentions James. Referee in charge, Ricardo Mitchell. Rich Mitchell about to get this one underway. Three five minute rounds in the Cage Warriors featherweight division. Liam James in the blue and black board shorts. Dean Truman in the white with black and green trim. The odds makers had Liam James closing as a fairly heavy favorite in this one, and probably rightly so. His seventh Cage Warriors appearance here. We've seen a lot of Liam James. We know exactly what he's about, and it's going to be a grinding, attritional, striking match. James starts the aggressor, but Dean Truman turning him onto the cage. Truman, a student of judo, Jim Wallhead, who we'll be seeing later on this evening. Huge fight for Jim Wallhead coming up, his 17th in Cage Warriors. Good strong underhook for Liam James, had the head position he wanted for a moment. Is the shorter fighter, so if he can get that working, he'll be able to make it very uncomfortable for his opponent. Oh, turn for the throw. Just getting caught in that awkward balance point. I mean, how many times have we seen Liam James grind out up against the cage here, slowing down his opponents, getting those short shots in, really just turning the fight into the war that he says he wants. A lot riding on this fight for Liam James. He really, really pushed for an appearance last time Cage Warriors were in Newcastle, and he really wants to raise that memory as best he can, and he wants to do it at the expense of Dean Truman here tonight. But I really don't think it matters who's in front of Liam James this evening. He seems so determined. He's taking the back of Dean Truman now. A yeah, good body lock to earn that takedown. Single hook so far. Truman's going to have to... Well, he's, he's let the second hook get in. And this is a, a bad place for him to be with still three and a half minutes left in this round. He's going to be fighting that grip. Both hands on one. It's the easiest way to defend. Liam James hunting for that rear naked choke. We can't see how deep it is from this position. It's not no, under the chin, the chin, though. You can see Truman's trying to straighten one leg in order to scoop himself out. He's done a good job of recovering the position here. Liam James staying heavy on his opponent's back. Truman looking for the switch. What oh, a lovely sit out. He saw as soon as he chose to go for it, he got his hips out. And Liam James really having to waste no time in pinning him against the cage again. And Liam James trying to connect the hands for the double leg. Nice wide base from Dean Truman. Oh, jumping triangle for a moment, but getting stuck mid-air. Certainly thought about it. He's still thinking about it. <laughs> well, $2,000 if he thinks about it a little bit more. Cage Rory is bouncy, but a takedown from Luke, from Dean Truman. Yeah, Thank you, excellent change of direction, but you saw the power of Liam James there to immediately scramble back to his feet, and he's the one with the dominant position up against the cage again. Just grinding his man on the fence. Yeah, not letting, Liam James. Not letting that forehead off the chin. Switch position from Dean Truman, trying to pummel back in for an underhook. Let's stay busy here, gents. And Rich Mitchell just grind, asking stop, for stop, a little bit time, of action. I think time. that knee went low. Yeah, unintentional. Just caught Liam James in the cup there. we have five minutes now, should he choose to use it to recover. I mean, Liam James doing some very good work in that top position, managed to take the back very effectively. I was impressed with how calm. Dean Truman stayed. We're going to take a quick look back at that knee now. Sure. Ready, go. Okay, time in, let's go. 
and they clinched up. Well, not enough time to take a look at the replay. Back to the action here. An aggressive start from Dean Truman, but Liam James with the left hook immediately closes the gap. He's got to watch his neck, though. We've seen Liam get a big slam before and land right in the guillotine choke. He's <laughs> got to be careful. He's left his neck right in there, Josh. Yeah, and, it, and it's the it's the chin strap grip rather than the full guillotine using it to sweep to top position. Very nice work on the ground from Dean Truman. Immediately jumping to the back. Can he get that second hook? He's got the wrist grip, which is going to buy him a bit of time. Second hook's in. He's got to drive it deep. Liam James is trying to get out the back door, unable to. And Dean Truman locking his man up here. Liam James is going to try and free that wrist and turn explosively inward if he can free that right arm as well. But what back control from Dean Truman. Dean Truman now looking to do something with this advantageous position he's found himself in. I say found himself in, he worked for it. Yeah, I mean, he was very opportunistic in jumping for the back. I mean, really, the guillotine setup was lovely. It was a, a, a palm on the chin itself rather than sliding all the way through to the radial bone, and that can be really threatening very, very quickly. It also meant that when he escaped, he was able to have good control, but nice work staying on the back here. Final 10 seconds of the round. A lot of back and forth action in that first frame, Josh. And it's Dean Truman finishing strong here with the back control. Yeah, I mean, having this period of back control at the end of the round, it evens the amount of time in that dominant just... position up for both people in that round, and it makes it a very tough one for the judges to call. Let's take a look now at some of the action from the first round. Early takedown from Liam James there. Took the back, and it looked very, very close at first with this rear naked choke attempt. Look at this switch, left hand inside, sits the hips out, you saw him look to the sky. Great wrestling from Truman. And Liam James just throwing one of those big bombs. Fortunately, leaving his neck in a couple of times. Yeah, using this chin strap, you can see it there. It's a sweep, immediately jumping to the back, and it was nice back control. Not able to get too much damage off, but a period of control that might well have uh, pulled him back that round. Well, we'd like to hear your thoughts on who you thought won that round. Join in the conversation on social media with the hashtag CWFC73 at Cage Warriors. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Lots of behind the scenes action on Instagram from Fight with Liam James coming out very aggressive. Big punches from the man from Newcastle. Took one back to the body from Dean Truman though. And James grinding his man up against the cage. Truman trying to re-establish a bit more of a 50-50 position. Motioning like he's going to go for the Uchimata here. You see that left leg coming inside to hook. And we've seen this from Liam James many times before. He's, he's got that short, stocky build. And he's just able to pin you into the cage and grind away. Take down there from Liam James. Yeah, wasn't able to fully control his man on the way down, so he's having to do a bit more work here. They're going to pull the hips and the legs out to stop Truman from posting up the cage. As we said in the, in the uh, opening to this fight, Liam James likes to grind these out, make them very attritional, very uncomfortable for the other man in there, and that's exactly what he's doing now, bit by bit. He's just wearing on his opponent, forcing him to carry his weight. And if he finds a good position, great, but certainly he's being very methodical about how he's doing it. Truman attacking from the bottom. A couple of short, sharp elbows to the top of the head. Bit of rubber guard here for Truman. Can't see if he's got uh, what he needs is the left arm of Liam James on the mat. There it goes. And this is a lot more dangerous for the hometown man. See the ability of Truman to strike here at will. If he can keep this posture controlled, James needs to start getting his head up. Switching sides. See Truman, there he goes, he circles the arm through and it traps James's hand on the mat, allows him to move. He's going to look for a shoulder lock here. See Great that? technique 
from Dean Truman. We have seen Liam James get caught by submissions before. He needs to be very careful mm. here, Josh. Yes, not that. He's that forearm on the face. He couldn't quite turn. Lots well, of cinder block of a head from Liam James away from him. But really nice attacking guard work from Truman. If I was filming a, a crime thriller, I'd definitely have Liam James as one of my henchmen. Certainly looks the part. Triangle attempt as well. Liam James is going to have to get that right arm back up. Posturing out instead. And when you're as powerful as Liam James, it really does only take one or two of those big punches to really... And he's got to do the same again, though. Triangle coming the other side. Oh, yeah. James can really change the game with one or two big shots, but he's got to be very careful here, Josh. Oh, moving nicely to half guard, managed to just sneak that knee through. And you can see for a moment some deep breaths from Truman. He went flat on his back, which is a big no-no in this position. He really wants to get up on his right hip. You see him using the tanglement of the legs to lift James's body weight up. And that allows him to move a little bit more freely underneath. He's got to do it again, though. He's still flat on his back. Trying to move that leg in a big circle when he raises it up. And referee Rich Mitchell there just issued his last warning. He wants to see a bit more action from Liam James on top. Liam trying to step through. This is into side control. Believe it or not, that's the highest percentage guard pass in MMA from that position. It's so effective. So much pressure on the upper body of your opponent that they can't really stop you prying the legs open and sliding that knee through. And once the knee's through, the rest of the leg follows pretty easily. Truman trapping Liam James' arm now. Oh, great oh. one from Liam James. It spins back into the guard. Well, it was a really nice deep recovery to that guard from uh, Dean Truman. Forced Liam James to scramble a little bit there. Positional control here going to Liam James. I'd perhaps like to see a little bit more from him in terms of offensive output, but you can't deny the fact that he's putting time in the bank here, putting control in the bank. And the judges really don't have any choice thus far but to score the second round for Liam James, I yeah, think. Absolutely. I mean, there were some good moments of control and, and the idea of some better things to come from Dean Truman, but never really got close nice to any of them yet. Liam James also breathing a little bit heavy now, takes a body shot. Nice head movement from Liam James to duck under, but he takes a knee there. Surprised we haven't seen a bit more boxing from Liam James. Spends a lot of time working the hands with the head movement. Big bombs there from Liam James. Looks to join the hands. Oh, big pick up at the last moment, but a much better round for Liam James there. Well, let's take a look back at some of the action from the second round. Nice jumping, left uppercut, right hook. A good flurry there to start the round from Liam James. <laughs> you see, he tried to grab the leg in mid-air to turn his man, just missed. Now, here was the offensive rubber guard work from Dean Truman. You see, the postural control allows his free hand to strike. Here, you can see, he swims through, looks to isolate that shoulder, and then bring the leg in front of the face. Not able to do so. Good work from Liam James to pass that guard and really maintain that top position for the rest of the round. Big hook there, miss from Liam James. Truman attacking with knees and elbows. Great tie work from the man from Derby. Made the long trip up here to Newcastle with his coach and teammate, Jimmy Wallhead. Liam James, just a short hop from home here at the Metro Radio Arena. And referee Rich Mitchell Gets this round underway. Nice show of respect from these two fighters. And they will start this round as they ended the last one. Trading on the feet. Uppercut from Truman there. Third and final round. Cage Warriors featherweight action. Brad Wharton and Josh Palmer privileged to call the action for you this evening. And there's lots more to come. It's not that often that Dean Truman goes through into the third round or to a decision. It's happened quite a few times for Liam James. We know he has got the gas tank to keep his kind of pace of game up throughout those three fives. Nice left uppercut there from Liam James. Truman, though, battling back. 
with long, spearing punches of his own. It's all very well having the head movement from James, but he's got to follow those punches back. He can't sit there, wait for the strikes to finish, and then, uh, then engage. You see, when he slips and rolls like that, he's got to come back with something off the counter rotation. Nice right there from Liam James. Didn't catch him with a follow-up second one, though. Lets his man up. Liam James content to slug this one out on the feet. Gets caught with the right, though, and bleeding from the nose now as Liam James has been caught with a couple of those jabs and straight punches. Nice combination from James, another nice left hand landed. And he's back to his A game here, grinding his man up against the fence. In good full head position again, he's got that underhook control. Firmly behind. He's given up man. He's given up double unders now. He got you, Three minutes to play with. <laughs> and Rich Mitchell again warning the fighters they have to use the position. Take that from Liam James. A good change of direction to force Dean Truman onto the reap, and he's looking to pass very quickly to the side here. Good effort, but. Uh, Guard restored, butterfly guard restored for Dean Truman. You can see he's going to look to try and crank and attack this arm if he can trap the forearm on the shoulder. There is a, a straight arm lock available there. Watch that head there, Simba. Yeah, James staying heavy on top here. You see, in this position with these butterfly hooks, Dean this, Truman can't be flat on his back. He's got to sit up and then use them to rock and create the momentum. But you saw some brilliant hip work from Liam James. You can see it too often, but he clearly has, uh, has those guard passing skills in the bank. Into side control. It'd be nice to see Liam James drop a few elbows here. I expect him to stay very heavy on top. See, he's going to connect his left knee to the left hip bone of Dean Truman, and I guarantee he's going to stay firmly planted there. He's going to stay as attached to his man as possible. So he's going to turn his body with stepping over here. It can be a very uncomfortable position to get stuck in if you're the man on the bottom. Well, Dean Truman doing his level best to generate something from this bottom position. Easier said than done when you've got a probably near to 165, 170 pounds by this point of Liam James. Yeah, that's kind of an awful lot of weight, has done historically. He's trying an even lower weight class, and to be honest, the weight count was just a little bit too much for him. Again, textbook guard pass into side control. A lot of that weight of Liam's is uh, on the back and shoulders and the arms, very big upper body, and he's using that well now to keep Dean Truman pinned. He takes the back. Yeah, went far hook first, which... Uh, you don't see too often, but he's got both now, a little bit high. Just to try and sit his weight back, get those underhooks, and then flatten his man out. Rolling just off the back. Now this is, a, you know, this is an experienced performance from Liam James, which is exactly what we thought he'd do in this fight. He's got much more cage time, he's got more experience in this arena, he's just able to deal with the different scenarios as he pulls on a bit of ground and pound here. Liam James unloading there. He's got 20 seconds to find the finish. Dragging his man back down to the mat. Punches coming in to finish from Liam James. And there's the buzzer. A long, hard fight for both these young men. I mean, no matter which way you give the first round, the second and the third, I think very clearly going to Liam James for the top position, the top time, that third round really was considerably more dominant. So let's have a look at some of the replays here. Nice big left hand there from Liam James. I was worried in this round he might get drawn into just the head movement and not throw strikes back, but you saw when he went back to his game plan, which was to surge forward and cover a lot of distance with his strikes, he got the entry to the takedown he wanted. Another nice left hand. Found the home for that one a few times during the fight. What a lovely reap of the leg there. 
And here's the finish. Liam James just unloading from that back position. Wasn't able to get the stoppage, but a great job nonetheless. The results are in. We'll throw it to John Martinez to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and all three agree. 30 27. Your winner by unanimous decision, Liam Bad Intentions James. Well, it's been a tough year for Liam James. It started last year in Newcastle, it's finished this year in Newcastle, but this time he finishes the year on a high. Liam James with a big win here in his hometown, and you can't help but feel happy for him, Josh. No, absolutely. That was hard earned, but well fought, and definitely the right decision. I think all the time out of the cage will have probably started to wear on him a little bit, and he'll be happy to get that one out of the way.